elder financial abuse is a multifaceted problem and takes many different forms. It typically involves the taking of money or other property of an elder in a wrongful fashion. I represented uh, a family uh, within the last two years where the elder clearly had advanced dementia, was sold a series of annuities by uh, a life agent uh, approaching $650,000 in premiums. He was 93 years old at the time these annuities were sold and the annuities matured when he would be 146 years old. Uh, many times elders respond to these scams because they are uh, isolated and vulnerable and there's a sense of uh, uh, companionship. Salespeople will put a fair amount of effort into selling these predatory uh, um, products. They will visit repeatedly the elder to establish a relationship with the elder. They will um, go to their house. Sometimes they take them out to lunch. Uh, and they develop a rapport uh, based upon shared interests or uh, uh, ostensibly shared interests. Society in general is, uh, is the victim of, of elder financial abuse. Many of these elders uh, need these funds in order to live uh, and to pay their bills. Uh, we often see elders who have been deprived of their funds uh, needing to uh, receive government benefits where they would not have received these benefits but for the exploitation. The problem of uh, elder abuse needs to be addressed now because it is reaching epidemic proportions. The various states have approached this problem and have recognized that we have a major problem of elder abuse. But each state has really been pretty much on its own in trying to address uh, this problem. The role of the Elder Justice Act uh, would be, if nothing else, to provide sort of an overarching organization and clearinghouse of information that local uh, practitioners and local government could uh, use as a resource in addressing these issues in a much more rational and well thought out fashion.